Electra socket jacks look really stylish, but if you don't fit them properly, they can cause a lot of issues down the line. In today's episode, I'm making a routing jig that quickly cuts cavities perfectly, every single time. Welcome to episode 7 of this Luthier's Workshop build series. Today's piece of essential guitar making infrastructure is the adjustable Electra socket routing jig. Don't forget to check the show more section in the description below for free plans, a parts list, CAD files in DWG, DXF, 3DM and SVG formats, and an AI file for good measure. It's free and you don't have to sign up to anything. I've included supplemental plans so you can build one of two versions of this one. Traditionally, a Forstner bit is used for this job and they work really well until the day they don't and then you've ruined your finish. I've used one on a few hundred guitars and always thought about alternatives. I made a center finding tool that could guide a bit to the right spot on the body, but I didn't like it. It still wasn't precise enough and I had a really hard time finding some brass tube to fit into it to guide the bit. Which brings us to today's build. Let's get it started. First thing to do is decide which version you want to make. The best thing about making jigs is you can call the components anything you like. So I went with ridiculous names that are misleading and confusing. In option one of the jig, the talk panels or items A and J on the plans are curved and you can make and layer as many as you need. In option B, the jig is a bit more streamlined with big rectangular talk panels that you only need to make two of. Once you've decided, grab a sharp pencil and a highly accurate ruler and start marking up. Put the tape measure down, we're not making gazebos, you're a luthier now baby. If you feel like marking up your work pieces from the plans is taking a long time, it's all good. It's better to be as careful as you can at the start, then the finished jig will fit together so much better. Okay, I've drawn out my parts onto a big sheet and I need to rip it down into more manageable pieces. First, I cut out the general area on the table saw, then free the individual pieces on the band saw then back to the table saw to cut them all out properly. I used my fence and push sticks first, but I haven't made a cross cutting sled yet. So I line up my lines with the blade and run them through using my miter gauge. If you're careful and take your time, you can get very accurate results. At this stage, I check my pieces against the plans just to make sure everything is right before I go any further. There I am pointing at something, mm-hmm, very good. I've set up my bandsaw to be super precise so I can use it in lieu of a crosscut sled on the table saw until I make one, which will happen soon. So keep an eye out for that. I'll do a table saw episode with about six jigs in it. We've got some curves to saw out, so I rough them out on here. I'm not too worried about perfection right now, just getting reasonably close to the lines. This blade isn't so good for tight curves. I use it primarily for cutting scarf joints, which I'll get to very soon. Sometimes when you're on the bandsaw, you'll run into curves you just can't get to. A thing I do is cut little fingers out of the workpiece and use the blade to sand away any nubs that are left. You can clean it up with a file after that if you need to. Here's a little demo of how to do it. Then I take all the bits over to the oscillating spindle sander for a rub down. Plywood is an imperfect medium, 
I saw one of the factory edges of the sheet wasn't flat, so I sanded it flat on the linisher. So now we've cut out and sanded our Wang Chung panel, Rhino Phycomicator, right tock pad, right spraxis, left tock pad, left spraxis, left nun triapter, middle nun triapter, right nun triapter, left Cilian regulator, and the right Cilian regulator. Luckily for you, I've given them alphabetic names as well. You'll find them in the plans. So those are the outside cuts all made and tidied up. It's time to cut some internal shapes. First step is a Forstner bit inside the lines. Then I use a jigsaw to rough out the shape. That's our Wang Chung panel. Almost finished. Once I'm happy with that, I grab some razor files and file out the hole to remove the material left over from the jigsaw. Holding it in is my luthier's vise that I made back in episode 2. In order to make the caster pin, which is the perspex piece the router rides on, the hole can either be cut from the CNC files if you have a CNC, or you can use a Forstner bit that makes allowance for the bearing size on your bit and also for any layers of finish that you might have to contend with. I should note that you don't actually need a caster pin, you can just drill your hole directly into the wood of the Rhino Phycomicator. Because the jig is adjustable for different body thicknesses, I need to cut some slots for the star knobs. I marked out my ungulate retention slots with pencil and drilled holes in each end. Then I simply joined the dots with the jigsaw. Some people use routers against a fence or router tables for this. This is the quick and dirty way to do it. Then I clean up the slot with a razor file. Comes up pretty good, right? Now we have all our pieces made, it's time to put them all together. These are the jig parts upside down. If you have a pin nailer, this is the easiest way to assemble the jig. If not, lay your pieces out like this first, so you can identify where you want to pre-drill your holes for screws. This is the prototype for a jig kit I'll be selling very soon for under 30 US dollars. The finished kits will be MDF and made on the CNC, so look out for a video in the future where I go through all the assembly again in a lot more detail. The kits will be pre-drilled or normal, depending on if you have an air nailer or not. Our Wang Chung panel is upside down like the rest of the parts and you're looking at the back. We want it flush with the edges of the other parts which will give you a good gluing surface. We have three of these Nun Triapters or Part E on the plans. They hold the jig top up off your bench. I'm gluing the one on your right. Do the left one as well and the middle one goes roughly in the center of the Rhino Phycomicator. You can just eyeball that if you want. Add a sprinkle of salt to stop it moving laterally. Don't forget to take the time to line up your pieces as well as you can. It all pays off later. Now I'm laying down some glue for the two Psyllium regulators and putting those on. Again, you can just eyeball it. Just make sure they cover your slots about 10 millimeters past the side where the glue isn't. Also ensure you don't glue too close to the edge or it will squeeze out when you put the regulators on and your top won't slide. The Cilian regulators are just tracks for the Rhino Phycomicator to slide on. Don't forget to shoot nails as you go and always keep your hands clear of the path of the nail. Or if you're using screws, to screw them all in instead. Glue should be enough to hold the jig together, but we may as well be careful. Now we have to attach the tock panels. 
I'm using option two panels. The only difference if you went with option one is you make as many as you want in option two and glue them all together to make two sets of the requisite thickness. So now it's glued and nailed, we can flip our jig the right way up. That's the left top panel there, or part A, and there goes the right top panel, or part J. Let's leave all that to dry for around 45 minutes. This is a threaded star knob. It's basically a bolt you can tighten by hand. It connects to a T-nut. When the star knob is tightened, it pulls the T-nut into the wood. The teeth in the T-nut stop it from rotating, so it's better than using regular nuts for jobs like these. I'm tracing the slots I cut earlier onto the Silian regulators below. Then I remove the Rhinophycomicator, or part C, and make a crosshair in the central point of each of the slots. Then I use a Forstner bit that is larger than the shaft of the T-nut and drill right through into a piece of scrap behind the workpiece that's supporting its weight. Do this on both regulators, or part M. Now we flip the jig again and support the regulators with the Rhinophycomicator underneath. You can see some greaseproof paper there which is something I use to protect my surfaces from glue. Now the Rhinophycomicator is supporting the two Silian regulators I can hammer in my T-nuts. Then I can screw in my star knobs. This jig is done. Let's fit an electrosocket jack. First up, flip the jig onto its back, then place your guitar where you want it by looking through the hole in your caster pin. If you need to adjust for body thickness, loosen the star knobs, reposition the Rhino Phycomicator then re-tighten your star knobs to lock it in. You can save money on bench cookies and shims by buying cork drink coasters online. They're super cheap and disposable. Once you're happy with your position, clamp in the body. Don't go too hard here, just enough pressure to hold it in. When the body is secure, flip the jig back down. It's quite front heavy, so clamp it to your bench. Now our body is lined up and ready to cut. We use a Forstner bit that is smaller in diameter than our desired cavity, but larger than the bit we're going to use. Once we're at the depth we want, we can put our router in there and hog out the remaining wood. You should set the router so the bearing rides the jig and the bit is fully inside the drilled hole. And commence routing the cavity. Be careful when removing the router from the jig to avoid cutting the caster pin. Wait until after the bit has finished spinning before you remove it. That's a perfect fit. This jig has a couple of spaces in the back to tuck your power cable, attachment tools and shims into. I'd like to thank you for joining me for this fun build. I hope you had fun with it and I hope to see you next time when I build that router sled I promised you in the last episode. I hope to see you then.